Welcome to another episode of Fort Bend Mathematics Tutoring. Take a moment to soothe your nerves. Remember, these is just numbers. They can't hurt nobody. Whether we talking about radical expressions, quadrilateral... Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring. Today's lesson is going to be about adding rational expressions. So let's talk about it, all right? So here we are, starting out with our first problem, and keeping in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that anytime they're talking about a rational expression, that's just a fraction. That's right, it's just a fraction. So they call it a rational expression because it contains variables, but all of the rules that apply to fractions still apply to these rational expressions. So let's get things underway. In our problem number one, ladies and gentlemen, we have 11 over 5x plus 4 over 5x. So just like with any other fraction that you're trying to add, you must have a common denominator. So make sure that if you're not familiar with finding the lowest common denominator that you check out our video on finding the lowest common denominator. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, our denominator here is the same. Yeah. So therefore, we can just go ahead and add the numerators together. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show that I have 11 plus 4, which is 15 over my common denominator, which is 5x. And then from there, I'm able to simplify, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, you're always responsible for reducing your fractions. So rational expressions being the same thing as a fraction, you'll need to reduce that as well. So notice that in the numerator and the denominator, we can reduce by 5. So I'm going to say 5 goes into itself once, and 5 goes into 15 three times. Therefore, my result here, ladies and gentlemen, will be 3 over x. And that is my answer, ladies and gentlemen. And here I come with my red box and done. So to recap over this, we started out with 11 over 5x plus 4 over 5x. Because I had a common denominator already, all I had to do was combine the numerators to get 15 over 5x, and then you'll need to simplify to get 3 over x and done. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the next problem. Problem number two, ladies and gentlemen. We have the following. We have p cubed over p squared minus p cubed plus q squared plus q cubed plus p squared minus p cubed plus q squared. Yeah, say that two times. So then, ladies and gentlemen, what we'll do from here is notice that our denominator is the same. So all I'm going to do is combine the numerators together. So here I'll rewrite this as p cubed plus q cubed all over this common denominator, which is p squared minus pq plus q squared. All right. From here, ladies and gentlemen, what you would want to do is try to factor as much as possible. In the numerator, you have a sum of cubes, a sum of cubes. So in factoring that sum of cubes, ladies and gentlemen, you'll end up with the following. You'll have p plus q times p squared minus pq plus q squared, and all of that is going to be over your denominator, p squared minus pq plus q squared. All right. Notice that we have common factors in the numerator and in the denominator. In other words, that p squared minus pq plus q squared can be canceled out, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So this cancels out with that, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll be left with p plus q. That's it. So this is my result. Done and done. So what happened from the beginning? We started out recognizing that our denominators were the same. So being as though that's the case, we combined the numerators. We ended up with a sum of cubes. We factored that sum of cubes into the p plus q times p squared minus pq plus q squared. So that's using the factoring pattern for a sum of cubes. Uh-huh. Once I did that, went ahead and canceled that out, ladies and gentlemen, and that left me with my P plus Q, got a box around it. All right, let's move on to the next problem. Okay. All right, for number three, ladies and gentlemen, we have 2 over X squared plus 3X plus 2 plus 4 minus 3X all over X squared plus X minus 2. Notice that your denominators are different, ladies and gentlemen, so that means that we cannot add the numerators the way they are. Instead, we'll need to factor first, and that's right, we'll be factoring these quadratic trinomials. So if you need a refresher on that, then please check out our video called Factoring Quadratic Trinomials. Part one, part two, and part three. Yeah, check those out. So here I am, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to factor these denominators. I end up with x plus two times x plus one. All right. 
That's the factorization of your x squared plus 3x plus 2. Then over here, I'll be factoring out this second denominator, and that'll give me x plus 2 times x minus 1. All right, so once I have these two denominators factored, ladies and gentlemen, I'll need to get the lowest common denominator. And what I'll be using is each one of the separate factors that you see. However, I'm only going to use the x plus 2 once because it's not repeated more than once. So the lowest common denominator for both of these fractions is going to be x plus 2. I'll need an x plus 1, and I'll also need an x minus 1. And we'll go ahead and write that for both of our fractions. So that's the lowest common denominator for both, so we'll need it for both denominators. All right. So here I am writing it for both, ladies and gentlemen. Now that I have that, whatever I did not have in my original denominator is what I'll need to multiply the numerator by. So don't forget that when you've dealt with fractions in the past, you had to make what is called equivalent fractions. So that's exactly what we're doing here. And you do that by multiplying by what you did not have in the original denominator, and you multiply that times the numerator. So I didn't have this x minus 1, right? So that means I need to multiply 2 times x minus 1 to make this an equivalent fraction. Notice if I were to cancel out those x minus 1, I would end up with the previous form of the fraction that I had from the original problem. Then, in the second fraction, I have x plus 2 and x minus 1, but I already had the x plus 2. I already had the x minus 1, but I didn't have the x plus 1. So that x plus 1 needs to be multiplied times the numerator. So I'm going to have this 4 minus 3x times this x plus 1, and I'll have that in the numerator there. Now that I have a common denominator as well as equivalent fractions, ladies and gentlemen, all right, so now I'm going to combine the numerators, and I'll end up with 2 times x minus 1 plus the product of 4 minus 3x times x plus 1 all over the denominator of x plus 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 1. All right, so that's what I have thus far, ladies and gentlemen. So let's go ahead and copy this over. Mm -hmm. and let's take this on to the next page here. All right, so there I have it. The next thing I want to do, ladies and gentlemen, is multiply. So that's exactly what's going on. So I'm going to distribute the 2. Got my arrows popping. Let's go ahead and show those arrows popping there. I have 2x minus 2. Then after multiplying this all out, I have 4x plus 4 minus 3x squared minus 3x. And all of this is going to be over our common denominator, which is x plus 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 1. All right, so that's what I have going on thus far, ladies and gentlemen. From there, we're going to combine our like terms and write our terms in descending order of x. So I'll end up writing this answer as negative 3x squared. Then combining all of my x to the first power terms, this is going to be 2 plus 4 is 6. Then 6 minus 3 gives me a positive 3x here. And then combining the negative 2 and the positive 4, you'll end up with positive 2 all over your common denominator, which is x plus 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 1. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so this is the answer. There's nothing else you can do with this. Now, I will say there will be times, ladies and gentlemen, that you'll need to see about factoring the numerator because sometimes it will cancel out with something in the denominator. But for this particular problem, there's really nothing that's going to happen from there. So that means that this is the answer. Done and done, ladies and gentlemen. All right, that's it. Yep. All right, let's try another example. Okay. In example four, we have the following problem. We have 6y plus 12 over 4y plus 3 plus 2y minus 6 over 4y plus 3. Now, notice we do have a common denominator here. So let's go ahead and combine those. We'll end up with 6y plus 12 plus 2y minus 6 all over your common denominator, which is 4y plus 3. Once you have this, let's go ahead and combine our like terms. So the 6 plus the 2 gives me 8y, and then 12 minus 6 is going to be a positive 6, and all of this is over your 4y plus 3. However, as I told you in the previous problem, you always want to check to see if you can factor something out of the numerator to see if it'll cancel out with your denominator in any way. It just so happens that you can factor out a 2 in the numerator, so let's see what happens with that. Factoring out 2 out of the numerator, I'll end up with 2 times 
4y plus 3 all over 4y plus 3. So since these two factors are identical to one another, you can cancel them out. So canceling out those 4y plus 3's will end up giving you a result that is 2. And that's it. Okay, so that's that problem. Okay, so in problem number five, we have the following problem. We have 3 over x squared plus 7x plus 12 plus 2x minus 1 over the x squared plus 3x minus 4. So what happens in this problem is, once again, you start by factoring the denominators. So in factoring x squared plus 7x plus 12, you end up with x plus 4 times x plus 3. And factoring out the second denominator, you'll have x plus 4 times x minus 1. All right, so there you go. That means that my lowest common denominator, taking the pieces of the factors that I have here, is going to be x plus 4 times x plus 3 times x minus 1. And that's going to be in my denominator there. And I'm going to duplicate that. So I'm going to rewrite it here. x plus 4 times x plus 3 times x minus 1. All right. Remember, whatever I did not have in my original denominator is what I'm going to multiply the numerator by. So I did not have originally an x minus 1. So I'll need to multiply 3 by x minus 1 here. Then, in the second denominator, I didn't originally have x plus 3. So I need to multiply this 2x minus 1 times this x plus 3. Once I've done that, I can combine my numerators. So I'll add the numerators together. I'm going to take my time on this, so notice that I haven't started multiplying yet. I'm just going to combine the numerators all over my LCD, which is x plus 4 times x plus 3 times x minus 1. And let's go ahead and just capture this and take it to the next page, all right? So here we go. All right. So now that I have this, let's see. Let's go ahead and multiply everything out. So get your arrows popping with the distributive property. We'll end up with 3x minus 3 plus distribute the 2x minus 1 times the x plus 3. That gives you 2x squared plus 6x minus x minus 3 all over my common denominator, which is x plus 4 times x plus 3 all over x minus 1. All right, now combine your like terms and write your answer in descending order of x. You'll end up with 2x squared. This will be 3x plus 6x is 9x. 9x minus x is going to give you a positive 8x. Then you have negative 3 and negative 3. That will combine to give you negative 6. All over your common denominator, which is x plus 4 times x plus 3 times x minus 1. In the numerator, we can factor out a 2. So factoring out 2, you'll end up with x squared plus 4x minus 3. All right. So it just so turns out, ladies and gentlemen, that you really can't factor this any further. So because you cannot factor the trinomial, you'll be stuck with this result here. All right, if you want to call it being stuck with it, you won't be able to simplify it any further. So therefore, you can go ahead and write your answer as you have it, just like this. All right. So either version of these answers would have been okay. So you could have stopped up here, but we went ahead and factored out the two just to make sure that I couldn't factor out or simplify anything further in the result there. All right. So that's the end of that problem. Let's continue. All right. In problem number six, we have the following problem. We have 2 over 4 minus 6 plus 5 over x minus 4. In this problem, ladies and gentlemen, notice how close our denominators are. If you check it out here, we have a positive 4, but there's a negative 4 in the second fraction, whereas we have a negative x here in the first fraction and a positive x in the second fraction. So it tells me that the signs can be changed, and then we may end up with the same denominator, which is what we want. So a way to do that is the following. Let's start by rewriting our denominator as negative x plus 4. So all I'm doing right now is just switching those terms around in that first denominator. So I switched around the positive 4 and the negative x and rewrote it as negative x plus 4 in my denominator. 
From there, I'm going to factor out a negative in the denominator. So factoring out a negative or negative one, you may say, this will change my denominator into negative times x minus four, okay? All right. Now, one of the properties in mathematics that allows us some leeway, ladies and gentlemen, is the placement of the negative sign. I can assign this negative to the numerator and successfully rewrite this as negative two over x minus four plus five over x minus four. The point of doing all of that is now I have a common denominator in my expression here, in my problem. So that means I can combine the numerators. So we know that negative two and positive five always gives us a positive three. So I end up with three over the denominator of x minus four, and this is my answer. Done. That's it. So let's recap over what just happened. In problem number six, we started out with denominators, all right, that were similar but not exact. We needed them to be the exact same in order to call them common denominators. So because I noticed that the signs were changed here, I was able to rewrite this with my x term first in the form of negative x plus four. But still it wasn't identical to this x minus four. So what we did from there was we factored out a negative one and by factoring out that negative, I was able to rewrite this as a negative parentheses x minus four. I then moved that negative to the numerator, ladies and gentlemen. So at first we had a positive two and then I rewrote it as negative two. That's distributing that negative to the numerator. And finally, we ended up with two fractions that had the same denominator. And since I had that same denominator, I was able to combine the numerators and negative two and a positive five always combines to give me a positive three over the denominator, which is x minus four, and that is it, ladies and gentlemen. So that's gonna be your introductory lesson, ladies and gentlemen, for adding rational expressions. So as always, please comment, like it, and subscribe to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring. Peace. We certainly hope you enjoyed today's mathematic presentations. Did you learn anything? Do you need to review your notes? Take a deep breath and congratulate yourself I am learning mathematicals.